Hi there, I'm Christina. And I'm Zane. And we work with Clean Energy Action, and we're going to tell you a little bit today about energy efficiency and revenue decoupling. So energy efficiency, everybody knows what that is. That's doing the same thing you're doing now, but using less energy to do it. More efficient appliances, LED light bulbs, more insulation in your walls. It's good because it's cheap. It's actually cheaper than generating electricity. It's good for the climate because you're burning less fuels. And it's also lower risk in a financial sense because you don't have to worry about how much that fuel that you're not using is going to cost in the future. Unfortunately, utilities hate energy efficiency. They make their money by selling electricity. So the less electricity you use, the less money they make. And in the Wonko sphere, this is called the throughput incentive. But there's a way to fix the throughput incentive to make utilities at least indifferent to whether or not they're investing in energy efficiency. This thing is called revenue decoupling. That's when the utility is going to make the same amount of money regardless of how much electricity you end up buying. That might seem weird to begin with, but it can actually work really well. It's not like most business models where, you know, you pay twice as much to buy twice as much candy. So decoupling can fix this throughput incentive that utilities have by decoupling their <laughs> revenues from the amount of electricity that they sell. So if you guarantee that they'll make the same amount of money regardless of whether they sell 10 kilowatt hours or 8 kilowatt hours, then you can get them to invest, if you give them some incentive to, in efficiency that will reduce the amount of electricity that people need to buy to get the same energy services that they expect. So decoupling, it kind of sounds ludicrous because you're saying I'm going to pay more per kilowatt hour, but if I'm getting the same service and they can actually do it overall cheaper, that's fine with me. I don't care. So there's a difference here between price and cost. Price is the amount of money you pay per kilowatt hour or per unit of anything. And cost is the overall amount of money that you're paying for the whole package, you know, the whole energy services deal that you're getting from the utility. So it's possible to increase prices, so you're paying more per kilowatt hour, and decrease overall costs. If you decrease the number of kilowatt hours you need to do what you want to do by more, then you increase the price of a kilowatt hour. So there's a, there's a conflict of interests here that arises because, for some reason, we expect the electric utilities to administer the energy efficiency programs. If you had outside companies um, that are sometimes called ESCOs or energy services companies that sign contracts with people in housing or large companies with you know, business parks that they need to make more efficient, and the businesses or, or people were willing to pay that other company to make them more efficient and reduce the amount of energy they needed to buy from the utility, we wouldn't have the same kind of problem that we have when we expect the same entity, the utility, to both sell the electricity and invest in energy efficiency, which can be against their own self-interests. If you care about the climate, then what we really need to do in the long run is burn a lot less fossil fuels. In order to really do that, we need to take some of these big plants offline. And the reason that energy efficiency is a good thing and decoupling doesn't actually solve this problem is because the utility makes their money on building these big things and putting a lot of capital into these big things and getting returns on that capital. But if they deploy more energy efficiency, which is great for the customer and great for the climate, they actually have less of a need to use these big plants. So it's a, this internal, like, bigger disincentive for the utilities so that such that a utility doesn't actually want to in the long run, invest enough in energy efficiency to undermine the need for their big plants that they have been guaranteed that they're going to get a return on. So the money that the utility is collecting on a per kilowatt hour basis, so when you pay eight, nine, ten cents per kilowatt hour, that money is actually money they've been entitled to collect by the utility commission because they spent a lot of money on something like a power plant. If you take away the need for those power plants, if you tell them they need to be shut down or they're not going to get to build any more power plants, that's actually a much more serious disincentive than just losing a little bit of revenue because your lighting became more efficient. They need to spend billions of dollars on building gigantic pieces of infrastructure to make money. They get a return on capital, and the more capital they deploy, the more return they are entitled to. So there's a much bigger disincentive um, for them to really make the economy much more energy efficient than just these lost revenues. And it's actually kind of a bad thing that energy efficiency is so cheap because if they can provide, the, if they can overall provide the same service for less dollars, then that's actually a bad thing for them because they don't get to deploy as much capital for the same size of a market. So the underlying problem here is that the interests of the public, of the ratepayers, are not the same as the interests of the utilities. Whenever that happens, 
often the utilities win because they have a much more focused incentive and they have a lot more money and a lot more access to the politicians and to the utility commissioners and they tend to get their way. So really what we need to do in the long run is come up with a set of policies that aligns utility incentives with the incentives and interests of the ratepayers on climate, on risk, and on the overall costs of the energy system that we're building.